68 teams, 67 games. UCF will play. Tears will be shed. Fairy tales will be told. Brackets will be busted. Champions will be built. The madness has begun. And this is hitting the field. Things gon' change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a boy, you to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building, and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay, run it back. Okay, always locked in, now I got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batted 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't got to ask. Good afternoon, and welcome to our special March Madness edition of Hitting the Field. We'll be breaking down the brackets, all 68 teams, all 65 games. We've got all the madness you could want. I'm your host, Jarrett Kappelman, and I'm joined by Kyle Graham, Armand Sadouri, Anthony Abruzzo, and Kyle Partain. How are we doing today, Ant? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be here. History in the making episode, so I'm excited to be a part of it. KP? Yeah, glad to be back in Orlando with you guys, so looking forward to it. KG? Doing good. Having a good spring break? That's good. Armand? Same as well, you know, couldn't, couldn't complain, you know, I'm just ready to get back to work. That's great. All right, so for today's format, we're bringing back the classic style of HDF. I will pick two panelists for the end of the show to break down the final four and battle it out to be HTF's March expert. Let's get into it. The East is definitely a hard region to come out of, with Zion Williamson's number one overall Duke, Michigan State, a rough LSU team, and Virginia Tech, and let's not forget our very own UCF Knights. Charge on. Is oh, this yeah. Duke's region to lose, or will someone challenge them? KP, I want to hear from you first. Personally, I think it is Duke's region to lose, and I don't think they'll be challenged until the Elite Eight, where they'll play Michigan State, unless somehow one of those two teams slips up. I just don't see it happening. It's going to be Duke, Michigan State, and the Elite Eight. I agree. And <clears throat> what do you have to say? I'm going to have to agree with uh, KP here. I mean, I don't see Duke losing at all until at least the Elite Eight against Michigan State. Um, I don't even think our UCF Knights have a shot. So I'm going to roll with <laughs> for this region. Kyle? Yeah, it's, it's got to be Michigan State and Duke. Like, yeah. uh, Duke, by far, in my opinion, has the weakest bracket. And in my opinion, it has to be about ratings, and they are the, they are the number I mean, one seed. They are the number one overall one seed, so it makes sense. But yeah, it's just until they get to the lead eight, it's not really much. Armand, I know you're dying to get into. Well, this. yeah, uh, you know, it is the reason to lose. Uh, obviously, you know, they have the number one overall seed, and you know, you just can't lose. Like you know, in my opinion, I think this is the easiest region. Out of all, all, all. I, yeah, it, it is. I want to agree with you guys. It I feel is. like it was set up just for Duke and Michigan yeah. State because someone brought it up earlier. They wanted to see that matchup last season in the Sweet 16, yeah. Duke, Michigan mm -hmm. State, and that didn't happen because Syracuse upset Michigan State. Yeah. And now they set up the bracket, so it's perfectly, I guess, feasible for both of these teams to meet up in the Elite Eight, and it's really not that challenging for either one to make it that far. So yeah. I want to. So we're talking about specific matchups, and I know you really wanted to talk about this. UCF VCU, give me your breakdown for that. <clears throat> so with UCF VCU, I mean, obviously it's going to be about a defensive matchup, but we all know it's March, right? It's all about guard play. So BJ Taylor and Terrell Allen, they have to be huge. You know VCU has got their guard player their own, right? Mm -hmm. So BJ Taylor, he's got to be BJ Taylor. He hasn't been he hasn't been that good in the last couple of games, and I think we we all recognize that. He's got to step up. He's been wanting to get to this tournament since he got here. That was one of his main goals. He accomplished it. Now that he, now he's on the big dance, now it's time for him to dance. Okay. KP, I mean, I know you were talking about this. This is B.J. Yeah. Taylor's moment, right? Yeah, this is, like Ant was saying, guard play is huge. In this game, a lot of it's going to be about the perimeter, and some people are going to say, oh, the key for UCF is inside Taco Fall. Make sure he gets the ball, feed him. Make sure he dominates the inside. But important to know, VCU's without Marcus Evans, their best player, their best guard. So, I mean, he's averaging 14 points a game for them. So, that's advantage UCF, and they have to. They got to take advantage of that. Exactly. They BJ and Terrell have to step up in this game. They have to make big shots when it matters. And we haven't necessarily seen that from them in the last couple of games. So, this is a real test for those two players. I'd say, yeah, we did look rough against Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, cool. the sure. momentum going into that. Armand, I got to know, right. like, who, who are going to be the key inside men here? Oh, uh, well, obviously, Taco Fall, we had to get it to him early, you know, let him get his game, inside game going on early because, obviously, you know, we're not a great three-point shooting team, and VCU, VCU is. So, if we can slow the game down and chase them off the three-point line, I think we win this game. Okay. And yeah, I, I agree, yeah. Um, uh, UCF, inside the paint, we just got to dominate that. I think VCU's tallest, re like, 
like their biggest rebounder, six foot seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was watching tape, and they've just made ridiculous contested threes. So I mean, you can't can't guard that. So that might be a, a maybe a test for us. Um, we definitely got to get Dawkins and BJ Taylor scoring because usually we rely on either one. If we can get yeah. both of them going. We can. Uh, we can make a run. Yeah, we can make a run, but it's mm -hmm. just but we have to get them going. And our offense has been stagnant for so long. That's what I want to say. If we get past VCU and how do we stack up against Duke? <laughs> good question. Well, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, nobody's going to guard Zion. So I think you're going to have to let him have his, right? So it's, you're going to have to focus on R.J. Barrett. Now, obviously, R.J. Barrett, he's special too. But you have to limit him. I think Cam Reddish, he's not been playing well lately either. Barrett's been kind of bad too. He was airballing Bar a lot of shots. Yeah, I mean, he, it's for him, like, he takes so many shots and he misses so many. Yeah. But yet, because he takes so many shots, that's how he gets his points. Um, if you could continue to do that and limit his, limit his scoring – um, for UCF, they just got to play defense, and they just got to stack up. They just got to stack up defensively. I think they got to have a little bit of rotation. I think Dayon Griffin is going to be huge in these first two games because he's got to be able to space the floor and knock down threes. Obviously, BJ Taylor and Terrell Allen, and then Taco inside. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you defensively, I think we could stop everyone except for Zion. That's just yeah. like the big problem. Um, I've been watching Barrett. He just he's talented. Like there's no doubt he is. Barrett is talented, but he just. I don't, his basketball IQ is just sometimes he just he wants to do too much with it. I think maybe Zion Reddish, like the star power on that team, he wants to be like yeah. trying to outshine him, and that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But I know if you force, um, I think it's to his left, he uh, has he has a lot of trouble. But he yeah. he'll make acrobatic stuff and he'll just shoot up threes. If you if he sets his feet, he'll make it. So that's the thing is we just gotta like challenge him. All right, yeah. So I want to jump into some Cinderella, like in this region. I think one that everyone's sleeping on is Yale. I really think Hell that yeah. against going against I LSU, the yeah, LSU doesn't have their that. coach. You mm -hmm. just saw them. You lose to Florida mm -hmm. on a buzzer beater. Armand, what are you shaking your head now? What do you have to say? About I mean, that? I have. I don't know, man, because LSU. I think you know they're one of the top teams in the SEC, and you know they're a very strong team. You know they're having a coach, but I just can't. I, I just don't see Yale beating LSU. I, I just either. don't. I agree. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this region has a Cinderella. To be honest, I think there's too much yeah. star power. It's too top heavy. I'm not sure there's a Cinderella that can make it to the Sweet 16 in this region. I think probably Maryland is as close as you can get to a Cinderella, and they're, that doesn't even count, uh, qualify as a Cinderella team. So, eh. so I wanna, let's talk about Yale. So obviously with, with LSU, here's the thing about this. They're going up against an Ivy League school. So what is that? That means they're playing up against teams that are like really smart, high basketball IQ. They have high IQ themselves. They know how to play the game of basketball. So that's why I believe like Yale has a really good chance of upsetting LSU. That's, and I actually picked them to beat LSU to Ooh. move on into the next round. I also think Temple, if they could get past Belmont, I think Temple could also make it to Sweet 16 as well. Mm -hmm. I like is, that. Um, I, like is that. Wade, I agree with that. Is Wade part of your decision for LSU? I'm going to be honest, coach? yeah. It's a big part of it. I disagree, but like I can see a point. Yeah. All right, guys, I'd love to talk more, but we're going to go in and jump into my favorite region, the West. This yeah. region is by far the hardest region and, frankly, the most competitive. We have Gonzaga, who spent the majority of the season as the number one overall team in the country, a hot Florida Gators team, and an FSU team who competed with Duke for a good portion of the ACC title game. And we can't forget about Syracuse, who's always looking to upset people. So, I got to ask, which matchup are you looking forward most to, Armand? Well, I have to say uh, Murray State and Marquette. You know, I think oh, yeah. Jay Morant and um, what's that guard? Uh, Marcus, Marcus Howard. Howard. Marcus, Marcus Howard. Howard. Uh, yeah, I think he's, that's oh, he's, he's, he's averaging 25 points a game. Yeah. So, goes to going head to head. That's I think that's pretty. That's one of the best games. It's a Thursday game, so it's like it one of the first Thursday games. Game. First game. So yeah, right one of the first ones. Yeah. Is it also too? I have. Um, I'm about to go with. Um, Are you thinking the like Gonzaga and Marquette second round possibly? Possibly, possibly. Or um, Gonzaga accused. My bad. Yeah, Gonzaga. possibly. Um, even though you know Syracuse was iffy during the regular season, I think they 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 always play well during, during in March. So that'll be a good. Interesting matchup. Hot take for you. What do you got for me? Give me Syracuse to take down Gonzaga Ooh. in the second round. Syracuse Ooh. makes it to the Sweet 16. Okay. Jim Beheim is unreal when he gets Ooh. to March. He's an okay. excellent coach when he gets to March. And then they also get Tyus Battleback. He missed the last yeah. two games in the ACC play. Yeah, Tyus And Battle's he's going to be huge, huge for yeah. Syracuse. I just – and it's a shame for Gonzaga because I really do think Gonzaga is a good team. But they're just – they're coming up against the freight train in March, and that's Jim Beheim. And think about yeah. the emotional um, impact on that, too, with Beheim early in the season. Yeah. Now yeah. That, I mean, yeah. they have his son on the team. I mean, I don't – I think Zags will still be Syracuse, but I think that would be a close game. Oh, I it think it'll be, come out. It has mad Me potential. Too. So, um, I have – I actually have FSU coming out of this. Ooh. That's mm -hmm. what I was going to jump okay. into next. Yeah. Who are our best two teams in this region? I personally uh, think it's FSU and Texas Tech. Me too. Yep. Yes, I, sir. That, that's my Elite yep. Eight. That's my Elite Eight matchup yes, for the West. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Kyle, you, yeah. Kyle, you look a little shook there. I have FSU in Michigan. <laughs> Michigan. See, that's what Michigan. I want to talk about. We could possibly get a Peach Bowl rematch, UF versus Michigan, in the second round. What would we think about that? The storylines there, I, you know? I don't think UF. UF has been playing a little bit better down the stretch, but I don't think they're that talented. You don't think they're yeah. that? I really? Say, I think. They're a young they're, team. I mean, they, the they, don't yeah. they, have, they, they don't have the experience. Exactly. They don't have the experience. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, they're talented. I, guess I didn't mean to say that. They, but. They've played really well down the stretch, especially in the SEC tournament. They took down LSU. They took down Ole Miss. Mm. They, they almost, had, almost had Auburn. That's they the nearly won the tournament. That's and the reason why they got in the tournament, and because I, they beat I, Ole Miss and LSU. They went right off the yeah. bubble and into and the tournament when they beat LSU. Yep. Mike White's done a really good job with them in the postseason. Every time they get to the postseason, they seem to step it up to another level. Now, to your point, they're young, they're inexperienced, so they may not be able to beat Michigan's depth, and that might be the ultimate reason why Michigan takes down Florida in the second round. But I like Florida to beat Nevada. They also have Nevada. Know. Nevada, um, they, had a, they had some experience last year, too, right? Yeah. They Nevada's season. also, they started yeah. the season They started season in the country. Top 10. They're one of the best yeah, in the top 10 in the country, yeah. I just want to, I mean – that and then I want to jump in. Who are we taking as our best player in this region? Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna say Morant. It's gotta be Morant. I gotta say Morant. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be Morant. Morant, Morant. or uh, Morant. Uh, Marcus Hashimura? Howard. Either Morant or Marcus he Howard. He is good. He's good, but I, I take Morant. Marcus man. Howard, though, I would say um, for that Marquette uh, Murray State matchup, I was watching um, Howard earlier in the season. He was playing UB, and UB is also a really good team. Yeah. Um, but he was just making these contested threes. Just they were just unguardable, and he just when he gets hot, like he's unstoppable. He's like. Sort of like Clay Thompson. When Clay Thompson gets hot, like he just mm -hmm. doesn't miss, and that's just Marcus Howard. And I think that's what's important in March. You have that one player that will put the team on his back, yeah, and he will lead the team, Especially and he'll throw a buzzer beater. Yeah. Like I think, I think it's gonna be special. That's what I would say. It usually is a guard. It might not be someone that is good yeah. all year, but it's usually a guard that you know has the ball in the last two minutes, takes the ball at the court, and. I've noticed a lot in the March Madness. It comes to a lot of ISOs. It's just one-on-ones. Exactly. On ones. Mm -hmm. And that's what Marcus Howard thrives That's in, yeah. where he thrives. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think Marquette-Murray State is going to be the best matchup in the first round. Oh, for in, sure. Out, out of oh, all. For Thursday. Yeah. 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 It, it, it yeah. sucks that it's in the first round. Because I feel like it would be like a great Sweet, sweet 16 matchup. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it's gonna be so fun to yeah. watch. Do we know what the over-unders for this? I don't know. It's got to be. I don't know. No lines have been written. Okay. It's got to be upward of 150. It's got to be. I mean... It's probably close to that. That's yeah. what I'm guessing. But yeah, oh, it's, it should be so exciting. So are we saying there's no chance Gonzaga wins this? No, I I think there's a chance. I have I do have FSU over them because I think FSU yeah. is, a, is a talented team. They have I like a lot of size. It's gonna be really yeah, hard. It's gonna be really hard for them to come out alive in this in this region. I mean, Zags are there's good just, though. There's so much room. Gonzaga is good, but like it's just it's just the it's just the it's just a, perception of their conference. That's what it really yeah. it comes down to. Mm -hmm. They had a tough um, out of conference schedule in the beginning. Right. They beat Duke. They beat Duke. They did beat Duke. Fully strength. Um, yeah. They beat Tennessee, did they? Or no, Tennessee, no, no. They Tennessee and North Carolina both beat Gonzaga, but they played them tough. They played. Or was it Kansas? Tough. They beat Kansas. Did they? Yeah, I believe they played. Okay. They played another. They team beat Washington. Good. They beat Creighton. So they beat some yeah. good teams. Yep. Gonzaga yeah. beat some good teams this season. Did they beat Kansas and Hawaii? Was that that tournament? Did they beat also? Beat they Duke? definitely beat another blue blood team. Yeah, they mm -hmm. might have. It might have been it, that it tournament. Was Kentucky. It was. It was. It was Kentucky. That's what it was. You're right. Yeah. Which is which is Kentucky's better than Kansas. I mean, Kentucky's a two seed, which we'll jump into a lot later in the show. But I mean, I just think. This is, you know, it's Gonzaga's moment. Like, they've been, they were the top team all year, and everyone's doubting them, me and myself included. I've said they don't perform in March, but yeah. th this they, has to be the time they prove it wrong. They made this the national championship chance. two years ago, yeah, and they, they barely it. lost Again. to UNC. They're, 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 they're yeah. certainly talented enough, but I just, this region to me is the most balanced. The, each I, of the yeah. one through fours can make a deep run in this yeah. tournament, and you can even include several others. Marquette, Murray State could make a run. They're just even Florida, if Florida gets hot, but there are just yeah. so many teams. It's going to be difficult for any single one of them to look, come out on top. Look, I, we it's, we it's all agreed on like Florida State and Texas Tech being yeah. the Elite Eight matchup. Yep. Like, all yeah, all of us did. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not going to happen just because because we all agreed on it. It's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Not gonna happen. It's, bad, it's madness for a reason. All right. I agree. Month. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for the East and West regions, and I'm going to have to take Kyle Partain to move on with me to the final round. After this quick break, I'll be joined by Tyler Fellerman and Connor Dowd to make their HTF debuts and break down the Midwest and South regions. Stay right there. Hi, I'm Dave Jeffrey, attorney at law. Has your favorite team ever left you feeling sad, disappointed, or even a little angry? Don't you feel like you should be compensated for it? Just take a look at these real testimonials from my real clients. After Tyrod Taylor led the Bills to the playoffs for the first time in 17 years, I was the happiest I'd ever been. And then the Bills traded him, and I wanted to die. But thanks to Dave, I found my will to live again. Yo, Kevin Durant's a bitch. 
when he said his mom was the MVP, I was so pissed. He put up 30 a game, not her. Same time, I need my boy Davey to be able to get me some quick cash. Thanks, Dave Jeffrey. I've helped millions of people, and chances are I might be able to help you too. I hate David Jeffries. My whole family died in a car crash, but he gave all my money away to a Saints fan because of some blown pass interference call. Thanks, Dav. Aren't you mad when KD went to the Warriors? Nah. That's pretty chill. Give me a call at 888-888-888, crying emoji, and I can fix your sports misery too. Please call the number on your screen today if you are experiencing any grief, sadness, or even if another fan has hurt your feelings. All you have to do is provide your credit card number, the three silly digits on the back, and the expiration month and year. This is not a scam. Derp de derp. Good morning, fellas, except for Andre. KG in the building. James Harden is a stat man. That is not You're right. It's the best school. He has 120 straight points now. Bro, 120 straight points now. It's just a pack. All right. Let's do this. Let's get down to business, guys. He's like Russell Westbrook. He's still got Aaron Gordon, PJ Tucker, and the boys. Come on, though. What about Carlos? Carlos, what's up? Come on, guys. Yeah, but they got to play the ball. Tom Brady gets to the side. 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 Tom Welcome back to HTF Madness. We still have Kyle Graham and Armand Sardewi to my left, but on my right, I'm joined by HTF rookies, Connor Dowd and Tyler Fellerman. Welcome. How are you doing today, Connor? Excited? I'm doing great. I'm very excited to talk basketball. Maybe like one of the best weeks of the year. We have oh, yeah. the bracket oh. coming out, a lot of games. It's going to be exciting. Oh. Tyler? I'm excited. I love March Madness. It's the best time of the year. Are you just excited for the Pac-12? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little hurt on that Gonzaga slander I was hearing earlier, but Oh, okay. Lord. Okay. Oh, boy. All right, well, let's jump right into the Midwest region. Here we have KG's very own UNC Tar Heels right. that are at the top. We have SEC powerhouses in Auburn and Kentucky, the American Houston Cougars, and my terrible Kansas Jayhawks. I want to know, which teams are on upset alert here in the early rounds? Tyler, let's start with you. Upset alert... Ooh, that's rough. Uh, <laughs> I would have to say probably Washington. I'd say Washington, Washington over number eight, Utah State. It's not really a big upset, but they got Pac-12 Player of the Year, Jalen Noel, one of the best defenders in the conference and in the entire NCAA, and Matisse Thibel. So if they could get their buckets in, their defense will lock down anybody in the country. Connor, do you have any teams on upset alert? I think Kansas. They have a lot of injuries, like early season. They haven't been able to bounce back fully. They have some big losses, too. But they have been on the rise. I could see them definitely losing in the first round, which would be a big shock to the Jayhawks because in the beginning of the season, thought they were going to go very far. So, so this is this is Kansas's first time being ranked fourth since 2006. It's their lowest seed in which they were bounced in the first round by the Bradley Braves. Mm -hmm. Kyle, who's on upset alert? Uh, I would say because you have Wofford, who's one of the best mm -hmm. mid-major teams, going against Seton Hall. Seton Hall is, they've had some good wins. They have beat, um, they beat Kentucky, which if they beat Wofford, they'd play Kentucky. They have um, their best player, Powell. He's averaged 27 points in those four games. They beat Villanova as well, Marquette, and there's another team. So they have the potential to win, and they have experience in the tournament. So I like Wofford's a good team, too, so I think that's also a good matchup to watch on um, the first round. But if they might challenge Kentucky. But I still think Kentucky will win, but it could be a good game. Armand, I want to hear from you on this one. Yeah, I have to agree with Carl on this one. I think Senior Hall has a depth to go make a little quiet run. I mean, they, I think they're, they're one of the you know the top you know teams in terms of depth. Um, I think they're actually one of my sleeper teams. I, um, I think they, they have a chance to go, have potential to go. You know, even though they play Kentucky, they right? yeah. Kentucky. You know, it's like okay. I think the, Kentucky will beat them, but I think they'll get Kentucky a run for their money. So. Okay. Now, I got to say, is anyone thinking about Iowa State and Ohio State? Or I love Iowa State. I Iowa State. We're locked, we're <laughs> yeah, locked yeah, for the Big 12 champs. <laughs> nah, Big 12 champs, yeah, they started the season off hot, a little iffy in the middle, finished the season very strong, so I'm a big fan of Iowa State. We're all in agreement here? Yeah, I don't like, no. I don't like um, Ohio State. They haven't really played well. Okay. Yeah. Connor, who's your Elite Eight? My Elite Eight matchup is Houston, the AAC. Pretty, they won the regular season, didn't win the tournament. That's okay. It's just the tournament. It's one oh, game or two. Like yeah. Okay. And then I got UNC. There's okay. nobody in the top half of the bracket. 
besides Kansas, if they can squeak by, but I think UNC, they're hungry. They just lost to Duke. We've seen them compete with Duke with and without Zion. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I think I think they'll they'll get fully there. I think they'll get there. They want Duke again. They want to be in that championship game against them. And Houston, I think, will give them a run for their money if they can make it as well. Yeah, I, have to, I would say it's uh, UNC and Kentucky. We've uh, seen a couple of, two years ago, they had the Elite Eight matchup as well, where Luke May, the god, Luke May. the goat, he, uh, he <laughs> hit a game-winning shot, and that's really where he kind of, like, started his whole career as jump, where he kind of is where he's now as, as an All-American. Uh, those, those are two high, fast-tempo teams. You got UNC um, that are, you know, they're like probably the fastest in terms of tempo. Um, Kobe White, you have Naz Little as a six-man who's a lottery pick. And then you just have Kentucky, that's Reed Travis. Um, uh, they have Montgomery, and they have uh, P.J. Washington. So, like, those, like that's the game that you're going to want to watch more in that region. And it's probably going to be, like, the most exciting. Armand, what do you got? Yeah, I had to agree with Kyle on this one. North Carolina, Kentucky, that's what the people want. Um, you have, you know, top coaches like Roy Williams and Coach Calipari. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a great defensive battle as well as, well as an offensive battle, but that game is going to be really close. All right, and this will be the eighth time UNC's reached the Elite Eight. Yeah, yeah. they're also, this is the 17th time they're the number one seed. I think that's, like, all time, so. Time. I have experience. Who's your Elite Eight? I'm going UNC Kentucky, the obvious choice, all but right. I would watch out for those two games, the Sweet 16 games they have. Mm -hmm. If they go, if UNC goes against Washington, that defense, if they're scoring, could give UNC a problem, and Iowa State against Kentucky. Iowa State, I Kentucky. I could see a little upset there, I too. I think the biggest matchup here is going to come in the round of 32, an Auburn-Kansas game, because yeah. if Kansas can win that game, they can build momentum, and Auburn just slaughters Kansas like they probably should. That might build them momentum, and could they carry that into a UNC actually, game? Actually, think actually, Auburn can come out here. I think I would like to see Auburn play UNC. You know, Auburn is, like, one of the top teams in the SEC, and, you know, UNC is obviously UNC. But, you know, I think that, that game – it's a tough. It's a tough region for them. Yeah, yeah you know, you, 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 they beat Auburn. You got to play Kentucky in the Elite Eight. So, I would say this is the second so you, most competitive yeah, yeah. region. So if you want to play Duke, you got to go through that word. Okay, Tyler, what are you thinking? How is how does Auburn match up? I think Auburn's on very hot right now. I like I like them going deep in the tournament. I think they match up against Iowa State in the Sweet Sixteen. They would match up against Auburn. Would match up against uh, UNC in the Sweet Sixteen. In the Sweet Sixteen, and yeah, that's a tough matchup. So, do I think, think they're hot right now, but not hot enough to beat you, a UNC team so, that's just as hot as they are. Connor, who's hotter right now, Auburn or Kentucky? I'm going to say Auburn because they mm. went very far in the SEC tournament. They played really well. They gave Kentucky – I mean, like, it could go either way. If they played each other again, I, I couldn't tell you who's going to win. I think it's going to be a very competitive game. They both are very good on defense and very good at, at shooting. They can score really well too, so it'll be a good matchup. All right, one more thing I just want to highlight. Who's your best player in this region? Oh, Armand? Man. I would say Kobe White. Kobe White? Nope. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to say Kobe White. He's, Kobe White? He's going to make some big shots. Kobe White. Kobe yeah, White. Yeah. <laughs> Kobe White, but Kobe White. Washington's player of the year, Jalen Brown, he can, oh, he can sure. really make something happen if the Washington can get going. I don't see them being the UNC, but I like it. All right, <laughs> that's all the time we have to talk the Midwest. Let's jump right into the South region. Headlined by one seeded Virginia looking for redemption after their blunder to UMBC. You have defending champion Villanova as the sixth seed and the seventh seeded Cincinnati Bearcats who won the American tournament yesterday. Tyler, I want to know, tell me who your top two teams in this region are. Top two, I'm going with the one and two seed again. I'm going Virginia, Tennessee. They're just, a, I love the top eight teams in this whole tournament. I think it goes top eight and then it's just a drop off, but. That's I like me. that, but it's March. It never <laughs> happens. Connor, Wait let me hear it. from you. Uh, I'm going to take Tennessee. I think they're a very solid team all the way around. Uh, maybe, like, if they're, they're facing a lot of shooters, they might get a little mixed up. But um, I'm also taking Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I love Ooh, Ethan okay. Happ. I think he's leading the Badgers. I think they're going to go really far in this tournament. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how he does in tournament play against like these teams that like it's do or die. He's got to mm -hmm. he's got to make shots. He's got to step up. So so you you you're not trusting Oregon here at all. I don't. Oregon's good. Pac-12 isn't that good, so they haven't really been tested too much. But I mean, they could they could beat them. Armand, let me hear it. Let me hear oh, it. Tennessee. I like Tennessee. You know, that's just one of my top teams. I like their toughness. I like their grittiness. I like Virginia too. I'm a little, I'm a little, I have a little faith in them. You know, they have to prove to me that they're worth. You know they can make a push to the final four, okay. but yeah. Kyle. Actually, I think I have I have Cincinnati, I have Cincinnati over Tennessee. Yeah, I'm having a little upset. You know, you gotta throw in you gotta throw in some wild things just because March is okay. crazy. <laughs> gotta represent our conference too. Um, in Tennessee, they've 
they're a good team, but like you can see towards the end of the games they kind of get stagnant on offense, and that's mm-hmm. that can leave open to like a wild shot. Since he uh, isn't really good offensively, so you could also make another argument that they can't, but you just never know in March. So, but I had Villanova. Okay. Ooh. I have Villanova Ooh. against That's Virginia. how I want to talk about that one, yeah, too. Yeah. Because Villanova is playing St. Mary's, who... I like St. Mary's. They beat Gonzaga. They beat Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're tournament champions. Mm-hmm. What, what do we think about St. Mary's? Are they the best team to be putting teams on upset alert here, Connor? They might be. I think they can make a, a tour. Like, they can get to the Sweet 16. If, they, if they're if they focused and they play their game like they beat Gonzaga earlier in the season, I think they can very well keep going and make this a very special run. You think so? You think the same? Cause I like St. Mary's, but I think the biggest chances on for an upset is Oregon. I love Oregon, Oregon right now. Oregon. They're hot. Peyton Pritchard is playing outstanding basketball. He's leading them to a very good run. They got eight wins in a row. I think they make it two more wins, make it to the Sweet 16. But St. Mary's has a good shot. I like them a lot. I want to come back to that Oregon-Wisconsin, but I want to hear from you, Kyle, quickly about this Villanova-St. Mary's. Villanova's 11-1 in their last 12, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're the defending champs. Are we taking experience? Yeah, you definitely take experience. Also, since they are, you look at, like, how well they played down the stretch. Like I said, 11-1. Also, you got to look at how they were – Perceived in the beginning of the season, where they were kind of just like they lost like three straight at yeah, some point, and they just yeah four yeah, yeah, and they just like almost got they got knocked out of the 20, top twenty five at one point. Mm, yep. So mm. that kind of just like might fuel them, and they might try to, you know. Armand, who are you riding with in this Sorry. first round, Villanova or St. Mary's, and why? Um, Villanova, you know, when it comes to March, I always put my money on them. You know, they're defending champions, and you know, and they have the resume. You know, I love their I love their coach. I love the way they play basketball. I love the way they run the offense. I agree. I mean, we can't. I think the thing is, is why you just can't doubt Villanova. Is I mean, you look at the UNC game that they won the national championship. Buzzer Barry buzzer hits the or, um. It was a Marcus Page. Page, Marcus Page yeah. hits the crazy three, and then you come down the court, hit the buzzer beater, and then next thing you know, two years later, you're beating Michigan in the national championship. You got to trust Jay Wright at some point, right? right. Thanks, for, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> no problem. I wouldn't do that intentionally. Now let's jump back. Tyler quickly mentioned the Oregon Wisconsin game. Mm. Connor. What, Break down Oregon. Break down their um, key factors to take this game. Uh, if Oregon wants to win, they're going to have to lock down Ethan Happ. I think he's one of the best players like in the nation right now. He's doing very well. Oregon just has to lock him down. They, they need to hit, hit some shots here and there. They, they're a very good three-point shooting team, and if they do that, they're going to beat Wisconsin mm-hmm. for sure. Happen, Tyler, happen free throws, though, is probably an issue. Uh, mm-hmm. Tyler, I know you're a Pac-12 enthusiast here. <laughs> what do you have? Well, I mean, Oregon's eight-game win streak, they beat Washington twice, Arizona State twice, Peyton Pritchard's playing out of his mind lately. I think they could go on a run, make it 10 games in a row, and meet Virginia. That was an impressive Pac-12 tournament. Yeah. I mean, they were not making the tournament by any means. Secured that bid. Kyle, what are the odds? What do we got here? I just want to highlight Virginia. Like, I just want to – you got it. People, people, like, if you look at what they did last year, Mm. like, obviously you're going to pick, like, they're the most likely to be upset if they're number one. Maybe Gonzaga, you can make an argument. But I just have to, like – that, in my opinion, is going to fuel them because you know how embarrassing that was. I have to know. Is there any chance they lose? Oh, there's definitely a chance. No way. Virginia loses again. Oh, 16? No, 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 no. No, I don't think so. Armand, any chance Virginia well, finds well, a way to take I have, it out? I have, in my bracket, I have Oregon beating Virginia to play Tennessee in the Elite Eight. I think Thank that – I I'll really want to see Oregon versus Tennessee. Do you I don't want to see that. Jump into Oregon, Wisconsin, then, since you have Oregon beating Wisconsin. What are your What are your reasons behind that? I just, just Oregon, just the hottest team right now. You know, I like the way they play. I like the way they play. You know, they hold their teams the field goal percentage thirty four percent in the field goal and three point three point field goal twenty three percent. I think they're a great defensive team. Okay. Let me let me just add. This is an Oregon <laughs> team without Bull Bull. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Correct, that is true. Sir. He hasn't yeah. played since what the, the third set. game of the yeah. season. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. so they're just now getting their feet. In the getting their feet started without him learning how to play, so he hasn't played since December. Yeah, so yeah. I mean that's a huge blow. He was supposed to be arguably a top five player in college basketball. I'm excited to see him play next year. But Connor, I want to highlight Virginia once more. Kyle, Kyle Guy, what do we think of Kyle Guy? He's got to put this team on his back. He does. Yeah, he's got to carry this team. They're I think they're going to get past the first round. They're not going to get upset again. I I'm very confident in Virginia. They sh- they play solid basketball. They're not too flashy, mm-hmm. but they they play solid. They know who they are, and if they stick to that, they don't get don't get out of their way to like do special things. I think they're mm-hmm. going to win. Kyle Guy, very good player. He just needs to Everybody needs to do their job. That's that should be their team motto. Just isn't, do your job. Isn't this what we said last year though? They just gotta you know come play their basketball, which is this low scoring defensive battle. And I think so. 
it just takes a hot team like UMBC yeah. to come out. Yeah. Some shooters can really yeah, they, mess up their team. They're shooting better than overall. Yeah, you know, the um, Virginia just they don't have to start. They have to not start slow. You know, yeah. if they they're start not slow. explosive enough to come right, back. Right. They're not built to come back. From you know, just quick, quick, easy yeah. buckets. The Kyle guy, quizzy, quick, easy, easy buckets. You know, get things rolling, and then I think they win. I think they yeah. go. I like DeAndre yeah. Hunter too. He's been he's been mm. playing really well this year. Overall, they've that. shot. They're shooting about 48% from three, which is like an upgrade from last year. They're shooting better from the field. So their offense is better than last year, and I, th I think like, that's what's going to be the key. And they also have to know, like, like you said, they have to jump on. They have to jump on full throttle, mm -hmm. get there early, because they can't get behind. I just wonder how the loss last year is going to impact them. Are they going to be like, oh, we can't let this happen? Mm -hmm. no, it's going to feel them. I think well, it's going to motivate them. Yep. I mean, you just gotta you gotta jump at it. You gotta come out hot. That's mm -hmm. the thing with March Madness. If you come out slow, your tournament's over, and you're sitting there crying on the court. And I get a great. Instagram video later. <laughs> no, don't feel bad for them. Eh, no, well, because well, the if, you, seniors, if you're a one seed losing to a 16 seed, again, that's embarrassing. number one overall to be the first number one seed, and you were the number one overall. That's kind of sad. One team we haven't touched on though in this region, Purdue. Does anyone have faith in Purdue? Or are we writing them off, Kyle? Uh, I don't know. Like they play, they match up to certain teams. I have to do more research to see what the first they round They would play up. Villanova in the second round. And I, I just... Or St. Mary's, the winner of that game, if they do get past their first round. You, actually, like, Purdue has been playing well against Villanova, so, like, you could you could definitely make an argument. Um, it's just, I got to take the experience over that. Armand, no, no chance for, you know, quote, the Big Ten Ravens season champs? Uh, I, got, I got nothing for you, man. I don't, they're not really impressive to me. That's fine. I, I'm just going to get them out of my lead eight anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they have a high-powered offense. I like them. They had a very disappointing Big Ten uh, play, yeah, uh, tournament. Very sad. Lost to Minnesota. But I have them beating uh, Villanova, but then losing to Tennessee in the next round. That's, that's what I'm okay. So, Connor, I, you're looking jumpy out there. Yeah. What is our, our Purdue-Tennessee matchup, our Villanova-Tennessee what, um, what are we seeing in here? Purdue, I think they're going to win the first round. I think I think they can win the first round game. I don't see them getting past Villanova just because experience. If Jay Wright can get his team going, they can really start picking things up. Villanova can make it to Tennessee. Um, if somehow Purdue does make it past um, Villanova, I don't think they're beating Tennessee. So we're thinking Tennessee's a lock to be in the Elite Eight? Not me, man. No, I know. Cincinnati, you yeah. Cincy. I, I know for me it is. I, I, I hope they play Oregon lock. in the Elite Eight. They're playing in Columbus. Does that impact anything? Mm. Nothing? Not really. No? It could, though. Yeah, nothing. I mean, <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the time we have for the East and the West regions. One who I'm picking to join me in the joust. I got to take Connor. I really liked his takes today. Hey, and yeah. he's going to join Kyle Partain and I later. So after the break, stay tuned for the joust. Hi, I'm Dave Jeffrey, attorney at law. Has your favorite team ever left you feeling sad, disappointed, or even a little angry? Don't you feel like you should be compensated for it? Just take a look at these real testimonials from my real clients. After Tyrod Taylor led the Bills to the playoffs for the first time in 17 years, I was the happiest I'd ever been. And then the Bills traded him and I wanted to die. But thanks to Dave, I found my will to live again. Yo, can we rinse a when he said his mom was the MVP, I was so pissed. He put up 30 a game, not her. Same time, I knew my boy Davey would be able to get me some quick cash. Thanks, Dave Jeffrey. I've helped millions of people, and chances are I might be able to help you too. I hate Dabit Jeffries. My whole family died in a car crash, but he gave all my money away to a Saints fan because of some blown pass interference call. Thanks, Dav. Aren't you mad when KD went to the Warriors? Nah, that's pretty chill. Give me a call at 888-888-888, crying emoji, and I can fix your sports misery too. Please call the number on your screen today if you are experiencing any grief, sadness, or even if another fan has hurt your feelings. All you have to do is provide your credit card number, the three silly digits on the back, and the expiration month and year. This is not a scam. Derp de derp. 
Yo, guys, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a Saints fan right now. Dude, I'd, I'd be, be so, so guys. Mad. I can't yeah, believe they're ridiculous. No call. Just, Bro, I'm puzzled. If like they would have made that call, who do you think would have been the Super Bowl? The Saints, Saints. would have been the one, Super Bowl. Come on now. The refs, just, they need to be punished. Oh, hey, guys. Did you see my uh, missed call last week? Could have sent that team to the championship. I guess not. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. What's up with this guy? Uh, Well, if you made it to this point in the episode, you'll probably do really well on your bracket challenges. But let's get into the joust. I'm joined by Kyle Partain and Connor Dowd making his HDF debut. Congrats on making it to the joust, guys. Thank you. Yeah, glad to be here. Yes, all right, so I have several questions all related around the Final Four. Let's jump into it. Connor, who's your Final Four? Duke, obviously. UNC, I think they're gonna. I think nobody's going to beat them in their region. I'm taking Texas Tech, and I'm taking Tennessee over Wisconsin to make it in. Over Wisconsin? Yep. KP. So I like Duke to beat Michigan State. Duke gets to the Final Four. And I also like Texas Tech. Texas Tech takes down Florida State in the Elite Eight. Mm. Now here's where I'm going to start to disagree with you. I like Virginia to redeem themselves. Okay. Virginia knocks off Villanova in the Elite Eight okay. to get to the Final Four. And then Kentucky is going to upset North Carolina. And Kentucky is going to make the Final Four. There's just no way three ACC teams, three number one ACC teams, are going to get in the Final Four. And so, unfortunately, Carolina isn't going to be the one. Okay. I think that the ACC is the best division. I, would agree I with think that. that they can for sure get three teams in the Final Four, and if they do, like it'd be, it'd be big. It'd be big for the ACC. Oh, so. they can, but the odds are just so slim. There's, I think it's really difficult to pick three teams out of a field of I, 68 and say yeah. these three are for sure gonna I get in. I think Duke and UNC are for sure locks, but I need to know who's cutting the nets down. Connor. I'm taking Duke. I love over who? Tennessee. Duke over Tennessee. I love Duke. I really do. They're, I do, too. They're insane. I got another SEC matchup against Duke. I got Duke winning it all over Kentucky. Over Kentucky. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a close game, much closer than when they played in the first game of the season, hopefully. But Duke's just too talented. It's just t way too talented of a roster. And don't get me wrong, Kentucky is certainly capable of winning this game. But I just it's just not – it's not their year. So Duke is going to have it. I want to say, since we're talking, you know, Final Four and we all have Duke winning, yeah. who's the best team, just say in general, at the field of 68 that can compete with Duke? Kyle, what do you think? Honestly, the most likely team that can compete with Duke is probably North Carolina. They've done it three times. They're more, I guess, accustomed to Duke's style of offense yeah. and style of play than anyone else in the country. The problem is Carolina's got a really difficult region, so it's going to be really difficult for them to get that other opportunity, that fourth opportunity to play Duke. Getting through Auburn's not easy. Getting through Kentucky's not easy. Potentially Houston isn't easy either. There are just so many obstacles for Carolina to have to uh, play through to get to Duke, and they're just not going to get that fourth opportunity. Yep. I'm taking North Carolina, too, just because they're hungry. They want Duke again. They've played them three times, as Kyle said. And they could really, like, the more times you play a team, the better you know them. You know how they play, like, in person. Like, you can watch as much film as you want, but until you play them, you see their speed in person. You're not going to be able to, like, match up really well. I think they're going to really want to like work hard. They're going to want to get Duke again because they lost the third. And we could keep in mind, this would be UNC's, what, third time in the last four years in yeah. the national championship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, I mean, and to only win one would be very it'd be, hurtful. It would be tough. Yeah. That would be tough to for the them. Team. Yeah. So I noticed how none of us said Gonzaga, we don't have them. Are we still saying if they make it to the final four, can they compete with Duke? Oh, they can absolutely compete with Duke if they get to the final four. The problem with Gonzaga is they run into these, and it's not even necessarily Gonzaga's problem. Syracuse is just a really hot team. Then they've got Florida State, who's also really hot. And it's just, it's going to be difficult for Gonzaga to make the Final Four. However, if they do, which they, I want to make abundantly clear, they are more than capable of making the Final Four. And if they do, they obviously know how to beat Duke. They've done it before with Duke at full strength, mind you. That's what I was, was going to jump in. I, I don't believe they had Hachimura playing that game either, so... I mean, they did not. yeah, Gonzaga is definitely capable of defeating Duke, but I, I don't think Gonzaga gets out of that. Connor? Region. I think Gonzaga can get to the Final Four. As you said earlier, they have, like, one of the toughest regions, and to get there would be tough, but they have played Duke. I don't think at the time, though, Duke knew, like, how good they actually were. It takes, like, a team a little bit to know how good they are, how far they can make it, and I think Duke has realized that, like, when they lost Zion, they are like, oh, we're not that good without him. Now that they have him again, 
they know how good they are, and I think if they play at, like, at their highest level, nobody can beat them. I don't know. I disagree. I think they knew how good they were the instant they beat down Kentucky in that opening game mm, of the season. I, I think they agree. knew right then and there they were certainly capable of winning the national Early games, though. I feel like early games are just so – like, you never know. Early, there's a lot of early, game, early season upsets, and the team just, like, just goes on a run for, like, the rest of the season, and they're really well, but I agree. So, now that we're talking, you know, Duke, um, Gonzaga, UNC, the Final Four MVP – are we taking Zion unanimously, Connor? Yes. Yeah. Um, R.J. Barrett could have a uh, could have a great game if if all the attention is on Zion. He has a great game, or somebody else from Duke starting lineup. Um, but if he's if he plays how he does, and they don't like put any like special attention on him, then he's gonna. I win. mean, it showed they what three and three without him. They mm -hmm. lost two games with him. He comes back, scores eighty one in three games. Clearly, immediate impact. Kyle, are we? Here's here's the thing: is when we get to the Final Four, I have Texas Tech playing Duke. I do too. And Duke already beat Texas Tech this season. So Texas Tech is probably going to put extra emphasis on Zion, which opens the floor up for players like Barrett and stuff. Because the problem with Duke is you either let Zion beat you or you let the rest of the team beat you. Yeah. They're going to beat you either way. And I just I, I, I think teams would be dumb to let everyone else pitch in. If you're going to let anyone beat you, it's got to be just Zion. Do you think, Connor, that Barrett has more potential to take over than Zion in a big stage, or are we just relying on Zion? Um, when Zion wants to score, he can. He, I think he can score literally like whenever he wants to. If he's like, I need to get a basket, he's going to go get it, just like LeBron can in the NBA. I don't think R.J. Barrett can exactly do the same thing, but I think he can take over. If he starts leading Duke's offense, if Zion does get more attention, he can definitely take over the game. Yeah, I don't Barrett I, looked rough in the ACC tournament. I gotta yeah, say, he was yeah. airballing shots. Yeah. He was off. He, I feel like he, it wasn't like he wasn't used to having Zion back. He felt like yeah. he was the only one on the court. A lot of ISOs, a lot of rush shots. Which makes no sense to me because no one's talking about Cam Reddish, That's and Cam true. Reddish is still an unbelievable player. He's yeah. also capable of taking over a game when they have to, when the situation arises. So Duke has so many weapons. Of course, Zion is the go-to guy. Zion is going to make plays every game. He's yeah. going to be Zion Williamson. He's, he's just going to take over games. That's a fact. That's going to happen. And it's just if someone else steps up and is at like a big number two, and it could be any one of those other starters on any mm -hmm. given night, yeah. they're nearly impossible to beat. So my last question, this is a little bit of a stretch. Will Duke make it back to the Final Four next year? Because, you know, they're like a one-and-done kind of team. Yeah. It, Zion's definitely leaving. Mm -hmm. it, he'd be dumb not to. But um, I think they could. If they really – they'd have to have some more players step up to fill that absence. But if they – they could definitely make it back to the Final Four. Coach K, he's insanely good. You know how good of a coach he is. They can make it. They've had some early outs in, like, previous tournaments, so that could happen as well. I, they're not a lock, but they definitely could. Kyle, quick answer. Completely agree. Duke's – it's Duke. They're always capable of making a Final Four run. Coach K is always going to do great things. All right, guys, those are some great answers, and I got to pick today's winner. I got to pick Kyle Partain. Really liked his takes today. Connor, great episode for your Thank first you. episode. I'm looking forward to the future. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. Make sure to check our Twitter for Kyle is um, his night vision, which he's going to give. Follow us on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, Facebook at Hitting the Field. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Don't forget about our annual NFL draft show on April 25th. And when any of the predictions from today are wrong, make sure to add these panelists on Twitter and let them know how wrong they were. But honestly, if you don't pick Duke, you're lying to yourself. It has been my honor to host this episode of Hitting the Field, and we'll see you back next week. See you.